Hi everyone, Raisin Anthony Brantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Dean Blunt album, Black Metal. Dean Blunt is a UK-based singer-songwriter who is mostly known for his collaborations with fellow musical eccentric Inga Copeland under the pseudonym Hype Williams. And they actually build the most recent of their collaborations together under their own names, Black is Beautiful. Now, under the Hype Williams name together, Dean and Inga create this strange, lo-fi, kind of beautiful, abstract explorations into pop music. And ever since the release of Black is Beautiful, Dean has been focusing more, though, on his solo stuff, his narcissist series EPs, his 2013 album, The Redeemer, which features a lot of the same postmodern pop-isms as Black is Beautiful, but with just like a note of accessibility. It's sweeter, it's catchier. Dean's vocals may be kind of rough at times, but Dean's songs are so much more direct and enjoyable. And there's some stylistic variety on The Redeemer too. There are tracks that have beautiful lush strings on them, sort of a Baroque pop flavor. Others have a synth pop style, maybe some R&B, a little bit of art pop too. And on The Redeemer, all of these genres are stripped back to their most bare of essentials, then they're flipped on their head, and they deliver them with just this overbearing sadness and melancholy. However, none of this really dawned on me at the time that The Redeemer actually came out. I felt that a lot of the performances were just way too sloppy to really praise on this record. And not that Dean has really cleaned up his act on this newest record of his here, Black Metal. However, I find this album to be so much more compelling, and for a variety of reasons. For one, I think his songwriting has improved, even though he's been able to keep things just so incredibly simple on one track after another. And just overall, it's harder to deny the kind of amateurish and very eccentric charm that this record has. As far as songwriters go, Dean is undeniably uh, an oddball. And I think he's done a lot on this record to cut the fat around that oddity and just bring you some of his weirdest and sweetest ideas, starting with just leaving a lot of the strange interludes that were all throughout Black is Beautiful and The Redeemer and just giving us the songs. This record kicks off with the song Lush, which is this gorgeous little piece of Baroque pop, just heavy, heavy strings opening this record up just like The Redeemer, and it is such a catchy melody. Even after first listen, this string part was just ingrained into my head. The guitars are pretty jangly, the drum beat very simple, and Dean's vocals are much louder, much cleaner than they've been in the past. And even though his delivery is very deadpan, the melody that he backs these strings up with, very simple, but also pretty and killer too. And Dean's kind of subdued delivery, his messy singing, his kind of vague and esoteric lyrics can be kind of off-putting. It's actually deceptively simple, but if you consider lines like, stay out of it, and the line, you never saw me, right at the end of this track, there are quite a few lines on this record that wish for, desire, and demand isolation. Take the song Blow, for example, which features more lyrics about running away and asking someone not to get involved. Instrumentally and vocally, this track kind of feels like I'm listening to a very forlorn version of the Silver Jews. And on the song 100, we're also getting more jangly guitars and a really punchy beat with a very beautiful sheen on it, and instrumentally the track just feels like something the Pixies or Magnetic Fields would do. And to get back into the lyrics, also on the song 100, we have Dean wanting to be excited to meet someone, I, I think like in sort of a romantic capacity. However, it seems that every Everyone around him, put in very simple terms, doesn't approve of this meeting or maybe this coupling at all. And maybe some of these dicey situations with other people or ex-lovers, just like on the song 50 Cent, where I think there's kind of like a lover's altercation going on here, which ends in a call to the police. Maybe some of the bad vibes flowing off of these situations are what fueled a lot of these leave me alone kind of feelings all over this record, which maybe feeds into the title of black metal of this album. Black metal, typically a very insular genre whose core artists don't really make it their business to cater to outsiders of that culture. And there are other kind of strange, out of place, ridiculous pop culture references throughout this record too, 
like on the song X, where toward the very back end of the song, we have somebody saying, when Beyonce was singing about someone being a soldier, she was singing about me. There's a song titled Punk on this record, although it is a reggae song. There's a song called Country, although it is kind of a weird James Ferraro-esque style noise piece, which isn't that surprising considering Ferraro has collaborated with Blunt before in the past. This track also comes complete with the sound of the volume going up and down on a MacBook or iMac or whatever Mac product you happen to be using. We also have song titles like 50 Cent or 100, which within the context of Dean's obvious fandom toward hip-hop also means something too, and we also have references to Molly on this record, or phrases like strapped up with my Nina. So not only does Dean have kind of a weird approach sonically to the role of singer-songwriter, but he sings and speaks in a different vernacular too. Now, the halfway point of this record is really where Dean starts to show how varied black metal is. We have the 13 minute near instrumental track Forever, a sort of expansive jam that involves drum machine and guitar and some saxophone and synthesizers. And as rudimentary and as sloppy as this jam is, the instrumental shifts throughout the track are quite nice. And overall, just the, the emotional vibe of this instrumental fits the very sad, down, kind of slow, druggy, melancholy feelings of, of nearly every track here, which is really what pulls so many of the songs together, even though stylistically and, and sometimes topically and, and lyrically, we have Dean jumping all over the place with different modes of expression. This album is kind of like just a, a weird series of musical vignettes. I really came out of this record loving what I heard. Overall, I think this is a very good album. I think it's an intriguing album. I think it's an interesting album. Like I said earlier, not only vocally, lyrically, instrumentally, I think this record is deceptively simple, but conceptually, <laughs> too many Ali's here, uh, there's a lot going on here. It has a lot going for it. If you're into strange, just out there musical personalities like your R. Stevie Moore's or your Ariel Pink's, to a lesser extent your Daniel Johnston's or your Tonetta's or your very, very early sort of lo-fi tape recorder era Mountain Goats, or maybe even some smog from the lo-fi era of Smog's music. <laughs> I think Dean Blunt is gonna have things that appeal to you, most definitely. He's really marching to the beat of his own drum, and I think it gives this record a lot of character. There are some tracks that pale in comparison to others. A few songs I do wish were a bit longer, namely Lush, which I think is maybe one of the most stellar openings of, of any record this year, but you know, that's, that's besides the point. Uh, I'm feeling a decent to strong eight on this thing. Transition. If you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Dean Blunt, Black Metal, Forever.